So, as we said, the whole webinar will be about the explanation of the principles and usage of Xilab EU application for Android devices. But, before we start, let's explain better who will get the highest benefit from this webinar. Future users of Xilab EU, as well as curious people about the new technologies applied to agriculture, so, we will have a small introduction of the surveillance fundamentals and techniques with an overview of the entire Xel APU system and results got in a Puglia region with previous Xilap Puglia application. Then, we will discover how our team organized the subdivision of the areas to sample in order to make it easier to move across the territory. Finally, I will dive deeper into Xila PU functionalities. So, what are the main goals of surveillance? And what actually means surveillance? The steps adopted for the surveillance process involve a visual inspection of the field, choosing the plants we want to sample and collect, coding and georeferencing the sample and in the end, deliver the sample gathered to the laboratory. When the sampling is made entirely manually, we have a few but important issues to consider. Besides the fact that the officials must rely only on their visual perception, to conduct a survey, a large number of tools are required, leading to a non-efficient working process when they are inadequate or overpassed by new technologies. The lack of efficiency can be risky, since the detection of pests before they get introduced is a battle against time. As a hypothesis of surveillance system, the overall information flow starts with a team of technicians that collect physical branches of the plants or insect while typing all the required fields on the digital form of XILAPU. At the same time, XILAPU will help the technician by automatically fill in some fields, like the geographical coordinates and the daily ID. The data of the working day can then be condensed in a shareable Excel file to send via email. Laboratories can use specific prototypes for PCA and lamp diagnostic tools developed in the VPA4 to associate the samples taken by the app to the positive or negative results of the analysis. The information stored in the central database can be useful for the phytosanitary service to produce interactive and thematic maps regarding the pathology and to plan better and better strategies for Xylella fastidiosa containment and control. The Italian Apulia region used such a technology to monitor Xylella fastidiosa in its territory. This slide depicts the results of some samples collected after filtering them from a database. Let's pick this group of samples and zoom in. Such precision would be without doubt impossible to reach by using the classical on-paper sampling form. Please notice also the rectangular shape that delimitates one sampling block because it will be elaborated in the forthcoming section. Let's now see what happens in the territorial context. Keeping Apulia as a practical case, we chose to divide the surface into a grid made up of meshes 1000 hectare big, relying on the universal transverse of Mercator European datum when a 1 to 5000 regional scale. Each mesh has its own identification number that each team got as a target of their working day. The usage of a mesh greatly boosted the ease of planning of all the monitoring procedures because of the very clear boundaries that delimitates the field of intervention for each team. 
Because the Apulian grids leans on an Italian standard, the problem was how to guarantee the same system outside Italy in a rigorous way. So we ended up with the adoption of the ETRS89 standard, which is suitable for generalizing data, statistical mapping and analytical work, whenever a true area representation is required. Moreover, ETRS89 easily scales to different mesh sizes, such as 100 meters to 100 kilometers per site. It's now time to have a closer look to the app. The first thing to notice is that Xilap AU relies heavily on the sensors inside your tablet or smartphone. That's why it's important to grant the access to the storage, location and camera, respectively, to allow the saving of the sample, to set automatically the location of the sample taken and to eventually take a picture of the sample. So here we are at the formal definition of Xilap AU. It's an application for Android devices, designed and developed by the Mediterranean Agronomic Institute of Bari, with the aim to facilitate, optimize and rationalize the collection, the geolocation and the storage of data related to plant Asian materia and or insect sample, vectors or spy insects collected in the field during the monitoring of Xila la fastidiosa. Please notice that the internet access is not strictly required while sampling. Indeed, this is only required when the user will explicitly send a packet of information to the server. The cool story about that is that we don't actually require internet during sampling although it may be very useful to improve the positioning accuracy. So imagine you are with your team of technicians and you need to start the sampling. The first step is creating a new team. So you'll tap on the setting button below the main screen and select Manage Team. From the screen that appears, you'll tap Add Team to start the typing of the names of the team components. In our experience, a team of maximum three people is the ideal. So you can select the number of components and for each of them typing the names or nicknames. It's important to remember that only standard Latin characters are allowed. Therefore, the application will throw an error if some of these names contain number or other characters. When the team is set, it will appear in the list of teams where we have the possibility to edit, delete or switch to another team if present. Sliding to left, all the main modules will be visible, each one characterized by a different color. The core module is the sample module, which is a standardized digital form that imitates the classical on-paper data acquisition. The map module extends the sample module by adding a map provided by the Google Map service in order to assist the technician throughout the sampling activity. The file module uses the functions of the map module to allow the users to search for specific plants or point of interest on the map, asking for their precise coordinates. The send module is the archive in which the user will find all the samples taken on their tablet, giving also some extra function, like sending data to the central database and generating the Excel file. The sampling form contains the information needed for the sampling procedure. Some of them are automatically given by the device, like the team composition, the daily auto-incremental ID, the date and the coordinates. Some information is to be typed by the user, such as the species, while other can be comfortably selected by a drop-down menu like the cultivar and the symptom. The selection from menu 
gives the highest contribution in speeding up the process of massive sampling, as well as checking an option from a checkbox, just like shown in the next slide with the field intercropping. An important set of options are found in the bottom screen of the module. For example, it's possible to take a picture of the plant that is sampled, which can be useful to easily identify it in a second round of sampling, allowing the app to take picture on the permission request. For the sake of simplicity, only one picture per sample can be taken and it's not required to save the form. When the technician is satisfied with the form contents, they can decide to save it by tapping on the Save button. Let's for now refuse to improve the position. A label is then generated and must be copied on the real paper label to be stick onto the envelope or container that holds the physical sample. The text-to-speech option, by pressing play, will help the technician to easily report the data on the paper label, especially if the team is composed by few people or a single person while the QR code provides a quick way to associate the sample to the laboratory diagnostic tool. If we decide to improve the position, an instance of Google Map opens up showing in red the position captured by the tablet. Moving the map and tapping on the site when our tree is under the center of it will allow us to virtually reduce to zero the position in error, doing a better job than the most expensive GPS receivers on the market. When the new position in blue is satisfied, we just confirm it with the confirmation button below. Obviously, the label is again generated accordingly to the blue marker set previously. It's important to remark that the map can only be loaded if an internet connection is present. The same is valid for the vocal synthesizer. If we want to switch to insect sampling or site-only sampling, used for a simple visual inspection, what we need to do is just slide in the switch shown in the image to change the type of form. Two noticeable functions are the following. The coordinate holder that maintains the current coordinates. For example, it's useful when it's needed to find a shadowed place to continue the form filling. And copy that saves the content of the form to propose it again to the next sample, obviously excluding the GPS coordinates. Clearly, in a new form, any information can be modified. This is useful for mass sampling when plants have similar characteristics. If the required spaces is not available in the app, it's possible to specify it in the Notes field after activating the Spaces Not Listed button. However, Xila PU can auto-synchronize via Internet its spaces with the ones stored in a central database when available. As an addendum to the usability of the app, we need to remember that the satellite signal, due to its physical nature, becomes very weak in the indoors and very susceptible to attenuation in presence of obstacles and cloudy weather. Connecting the device to the internet will provide good approximation in unfavorable conditions and aid to the positioning module. And that the basic information the app needs for letting the user save is the species, the coordinates and the symptom level. The map module is useful to check the situation of the sampling work that the tablet is doing that particular day. There is a blue dot that indicates the tablet current position as well as the markers that indicates where we took the samples in the territory. The last sample gets the green color while the previous ones get the yellow color. 
The icon displayed inside the marker suggests us whether we took a plant, an insect, or we have just done a visual inspection. These pictures are a good example of a massive use of Xila PU for sampling. It's absolutely satisfying seeing all the samples taken with extreme precision and accuracy in a field when the sampling procedure is well done by the operator. Please remember that the green and yellow markers are related to the action of the current day and that markers are personal and displayed only in the worker's device. On the right side of the map module, there are three utility buttons. The map type button that switches the map type from satellite imagery to street map and vice versa. The filter button that displays or hides the samples based on their type and a sample button that loads the form of the sample module. So this is the type of maps available when pressing map type. On the left the terrain map that shows the satellite images, and on the right side the vector map that shows the streets. And this is the effect of filtering the plant sample on the map in order to make it more neat in the case of crowded markers clusters. And obviously, as soon as the saving of the sample is done, the corresponding green marker will be placed on the map. In the bottom bar, we find some advanced functionalities that improves the technician's sampling experience. The Select Day function allows the user to load from the tablet internal memory the samples taken in another day. It is also possible to change the color of each day with aim to distinguish better the markers on the map. This is useful if we need to continue a pending sampling activity from another day without running into duplicated samples. The summary button gives us a rapid list of the quantity sample for each species during the current day. The cartography module provides us two layers on which we can load grids, meshes and administrative boundaries when available. When we tap on cartography, we will be asked to select on which of the two layers apply the cartography. In particular, the upper level will give us the grids with administrative boundaries. When the chosen cartography is set, Xila PU will take some time to load all the meshes. When the process ends, the name of the current grid is displayed on top. To be aware of what mesh number we are crossing, it's just enough to tap on the area to see for a while the name on the bottom of the screen. If we want to load a single mesh, we will use the second layer. Once chosen the area, Xila PU requires the number of the mesh we need. While typing, an autocomplete menu will help us to speed up the process. A mesh can be used to improve even further the accuracy of the sampling, and also in this case it's enough to tap on a single subsquare to know its name. In this case we see an example of diagonal sampling pattern. The find module let us set the coordinates of the markers in advance on the map. The plus button on the right side will open a small window in which the user will set a new point to check. It's possible to set the coordinates in three different formats. Degrees decimals, degrees minutes decimals and degrees minutes seconds decimals. Moreover, every marker can have a specified name. When confirmed, the new point appears in the list where it can be deleted or edited. When the points are ready, by pressing the magnifier in the bottom right corner of the map, it opens up and shows 
the required markers in fuchsia color. When the technician is near to the point, they have just to select it, so the sampling button turns from green to fuchsia. It means that the sampling form will open with the coordinates ready and blocked. To make it quicker the setting of the points, Xila PU provides the import and export capabilities. In fact, a well-formatted Excel file with many points can be read, enriched with new points and exported again to the internal memory of the tablet. The SAND module is the storage of all the samples taken in the various working day. By tapping on one of the working day folders, a window shows four options to the user. Open to display the content of the folder. Retrieve results to ask the server for the analysis results. Delete to delete the entire folder. Generate Excel to create an Excel file used as a brief. And send to send all the data gathered in the field to the central database. When a folder is open, all the samples and Excel files are listed. And when a sample is clicked, it is possible to edit it, delete it and check again its label. An Excel file can be in fact opened inside the tablet, deleted or shared to be sent via email. The requirement to open the Excel file is obviously having a device with an Office-like app installed. To generate the Excel file is just needed to select the folder and choose Generate Excel. If the laboratory has processed the samples by selecting the retrieve results, Xilap U will send the IDs to the central server to require the results which can be positive or negative. For reporting and tracking reasons, the user can send all the daily data to the central database using personal credentials. Lastly, if the server contains PDF documents, XILAPU will display it in a list available to the users. The documents can be of any topic, from guides about sampling to low ordinances. Even in this case, internet access is required. Finally, I really want to thank you for your attention and to the rest of the TMCM, hoping that you found this technology interesting and useful.